This week on TGC News, a Mexican 1911, a Turkish 1911, and an ultra fancy double stack 1911 from a company that used to be a meme. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News. I'm John, and if you leave a comment that makes me laugh, I'll read it out in front of the class, just like the one from last week. Don't forget, Hector is running three aero precisions with spoon engines. That was pretty good. That's good. I like that. Excuse me, I'm a bit under the weather. It's been a minute. How's about some gun news? First up, Finland. Yes, the birthplace of the legendary Kimi Raikkonen. Finland has announced that they will be opening 300 more gun ranges to encourage citizens to take greater interest in national defense. For reference, here is a map of Finland laid over the U.S. and for no reason at all part of Canada. Could have like tilted that. I don't get it. 300 new ranges on the eastern part of the U.S. would have anti-gunners losing their minds, but the Finnish folks seem to get it, especially because they border Russia, and we all know what's going on over there. It's interesting to see how modern European nations are handling that sort of threat. It would be really weird if, like, Mexico or Canada started acting up. I don't know what we would do. Speaking of military stuff, Federal announced that they won the contract to make the Mark 316 Mod Zero ammo for the U.S. Navy for two years. This is 175 grain match load for the 76251 and is very likely to be extremely similar to the current Sierra Match King load they do for 308 with the same bullet. And Remington also had an announcement, the ammo version of Remington, not the gun version, which is technically part of the same company as Federal. Anyway, they also won a contract for the US Navy, this time for shotgun slugs. The contract calls for one ounce slugs that travel between 1590 and 1770 feet per second. Remington makes a product that falls right in the sweet spot of that request already, so good for them putting this under the Remington name to help rebuild that brand. We all know they need it. Also, in industry news, lots, lots of ammo this week. You might remember a company called True Velocity Ammo, otherwise known as TV Ammo. They were in the news a lot with the next-gen squad weapon stuff with their hybrid plastic and metal casings. Well, they were sort of acquired by a company called Breeze Holdings, a.k.a. a shell company out of Irving, Texas. The interesting thing here is that this is after True Velocity acquired Delta P Design, a 3D printed suppressor company, and Breeze is already publicly traded, so in theory you could possibly get shares of the ammo brand. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Maybe that's the angle. I hate corporate nonsense like this. I think it's all just smoke and mirrors, but... I wanted to share it with you guys that might want to know about it, just like you're going to want to know about this week's sponsor, KDG. Oh, man, I wish this was a little bit longer. Hey, John, any ideas? Oh, I got this. <laughs> KDG. Whoa, the SRX-6. Hey, what else you got over there for the AR? KDG. Oh, the MREX AR rail. No, 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 don't do it a third time. KDG. What in the crayon eating? Oh, it works. Oh, and if you want to make that magic happen, maybe a little bit easier, try using TGC-10. You know what that is, and you know where to use it. Don't be dumb. There is a new optic in town this week from Vortex. It's called the Defender ST, and this is a continuation of the Defender line where we first saw the CCW version, which was smaller than this new ST. It can be had with either a three or six MOA dot reticle, and much like the CCW, this one also features a textured face that protrudes a little bit past the glass to help protect it and give you sort of traction for one-handed pistol manipulations using the face of the optic. They also come with a 10-minute auto shutoff and a motion sensor to turn it back on. MSRP is 470, but I suspect it'll be a lot less in storage. Stay tuned for our deal of the week for that. This thing looks like it's pretty well thought out. I have one in for testing, but I'm waiting for Delta Point Pro plates because that's what it is for the guns I own. They mostly come with RMR. Eh, just waiting on that. TSOS USA made a huge announcement recently. They are going to be the first ever commercial manufacturer of a 1911 for the civilian marksmanship program. The gun is the M1911A1, which is a reproduction style gun. And I kind of find this fascinating. First, 
This could be a result of the supply for CMP getting smaller and smaller. And this is a Turkish import. So the official 1911 of the civilian marksmanship program is a Turkish import. That's kind of weird to me. The MSRP on this CMP edition of the gun is 480. It is very much a classic 1911 and not my kind of thing. But I suppose if you want an affordable old school 1911, this could be the ticket, I guess. Speaking of imported guns, Black Ace is Tactical, a company largely known for their shotguns and questionable quality, has announced a new pistol. It's called the Alpha 9mm, and it looks a crap ton like a Glock 19. And this is also a bit weird because the images on their site tell us a different story. The box says Black Aces. The pistol itself on the passenger side shows Adler Arms on the nose of the slide, which is a company that sells lever-action shotguns out of Turkey. Interestingly enough, the other side of the gun, in a different picture on the Black Aces website, says Akdal Arms, which is a different Turkish import company on the other side. Like, I, I don't get it. So it looks like Akdal is the actual importer, and Black Aces is either buying them or badly claiming that it's their own, or maybe they're the same company and they just didn't have the import license. I don't know. Something's going on there. <laughs> Either way, the MSRP is $439, and people will probably buy one because it's cheap. Will it be a good choice? No. But it will likely still sell. I mean, the dagger is cheaper and does the same thing. Why are people buying crap like this? How's about that deal of the week that I just promised you a couple minutes ago? If you're looking to grab one of those Vortex Defender STs, this is the cheapest you'll find it right now. MSRP was $470, right? Well, this is going for $330 using our link down in the description. If you use our link, we get a tiny kickback and it helps us keep the lights on, so that would be rad if you could do that. Again, use our link to grab that optic. Thanks. <laughs> Now, how's about some more new guns? SK Guns is continuing the La Revolution series with the new Orozco, Orozco, which is named after Pascual Orozco. Sorry for my pronunciation. Another key figure in the Mexican Revolution. This one is based on the Colt 1911, and as per usual, this is a limited run, this time 300 guns. It's got this ultra high polish black finish with engraving and silver inlays, and I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. And it should be with an MSRP of three grand. SK Guns has been cranking out some truly just beautiful guns over the last year or so, and one of these days, I wanna shoot one and see if they're any good, but they look just beautiful. Also in interesting gun news, a company called Watchtower Firearms released their new Apache 2011 style pistol. It's quite fancy with a four and a quarter inch barrel, and I think it's got an 18 and a 20 round mag. It's got a comp on there that's sort of cupped by the frame, <laughs> a bunch of fancy machining all over, and of course, a slide cut for an optic. It's also got a PVD coating and some other trinkets. The MSRP is just shy of four Gs. The interesting thing here is the history. Watchtower is formerly known as F1 Firearms. Yes, that sort of like meme of a company that couldn't get out of their own way was purchased in May of last year by Jason Koloski, who was a recon Marine and then spent a ton of time working for the federal government and eventually Raytheon before Moving on to run Watchtower. It's an interesting career path. They've made claims that they will be the next great American gun company. And with prices like that, I feel like they're going to fall well short of that claim. Let's be fair. PSA is the greatest American gun company that we've seen in decades because they're arming more Americans than any other brand out there. Sorry, they are. However, if these Watchtower guns are legit, they could be a new contender for one of the nicer premium gun brands in the U.S., which is not a bad thing. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that down in the comments.